G'day. An episode or two ago I was making up some uh, new change gears for a, a lathe uh, because the original ones had, had gone somewhere, we don't know where. But there was a second part to that and that was to make up some banjos to fit them. Uh, what's a banjo? Well, that's a, that's a banjo there. Uh, so basically it's something that, that pivots. There's a, a, a spot for a bolt to, to clamp and then there's a, a generally a stud of some sort that comes out of here which um, gears fit on. So you've got a gear here and you've got a gear here and that gives you some centre distance adjustment there and you can also swing that up and down a bit to give you, let you mesh into the gear down here. Uh, so they're quite common on, on lathes and, and things like that or you're trying to get change gears to, to work. Originally this, this video was going to have some of the gear cutting in it, but I then decided the gear cutting was, was enough that I could put that into a separate video. So you might see the occasional reference to gears, but it's basically about the banjo. In this video there's lots of uh, chips flying, we've got uh, lots of machining operations on the rotary table, something a little bit different. Before I start doing any, any machining proper, I need to reduce this bit of aluminium, uh, this one down to 32 and this one down to 37. I'm just about to take this block down to thickness. Previous clip you saw was taking the plastic down and I used basically two um, strap clamp pieces to, to provide a stop and then I used a toe clamp against this end here. Here I'm using what's known as a two-part vise or a free vise. Uh, clamps to the mill table and it's ideal for, for these longer, wider bits. Uh, this one I designed little, 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 five or so years back, I think, six years back. And uh, Hemingway Kits now make this one. So uh, if you, uh, or a variation of this, they've changed the design slightly. But um, yeah, if you, if you want one of these things, they sell a kit, not hard to make. Enough of that free plug. They don't sponsor me or anything. Uh, so now I'm going to do the same thing, but basically take off, um, what well, I need to take off here, about four millimetres per side. So I'll probably do two passes of two millimetres, uh, flip it over, do the same thing. I've taken my two aluminium blocks down, uh, this one's 32, the other one's 37, and that's just because that's what the drawing says they should be. Uh, the next thing I've done is marked out on top here the basic shape of the, the, the banjo. Uh, I did allow a little bit on my, on my block for some uh, clearance, so that's, that's all good. The basic outline, I don't know whether you can see it there, I've, I've scribed it, but I've also put a, a, a black texture line around there just to try and make uh, pick that out a little bit, but that's the trouble with using uh, this sort of stuff for mark out. Um, it, it scratches easily and, and uh, can, can wash off and all that sort of thing, so um, it is what it is. So I've got my basic shape here, I'm now going to try and cut that out, uh, probably with a band, so I'm not going to worry too much about the corners here. Um, I just want to get it roughly so I can put it up on a dividing head and then um, you know properly cut these these radii out. The the points here um, I've, I've marked them, but the, the the holes are sort of the last thing I want to do. Uh, I want to get that basic shape right and um, then start looking at the the heights. The 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 part has got a couple of different levels. Uh, I may have to put some, some fine holes down there, but because these holes are marking out where my, um, how would you say, my, um, my datums are, uh, I, I, I want to try and keep it as, as precise as I can, and if I put a big hole in there I can't necessarily pick that up as easily. 
I've marked out this bed and as you can see most of the, the texture is rubbed off but that's okay because what I wanted to do here was just um, mark it out so that I could then uh, cut the excess material off. I've saved a, a chunk here and a chunk here uh, which will be used for something else sometime in the future but uh, I've got center pops there, there and well here and here uh, and that will enable me to, to center things up and uh, using the rotary table to, to shape some um, radii here and that'll, that'll give me a profile. Now this one was done with texture. I moaned a bit a moment ago about the you know the texture rubbing off and so I went hunting around the internet and found a, a recipe for mark out blue and uh, went out and bought some bits and pieces for it and made it up and the colors colors fine but it rubs off um, so it could be the recipe I need to experiment with that again uh, or it could actually be the ingredients I'm told that this this contains shellac and I'm told that shellac if it gets too old will won't dry it'll just go sticky so it could well be that but I need to uh, need to play with that a bit and, and, and see what happens what I have to do now is mark this one up now most of this is pretty straightforward I've got plenty of dimensions there I can choose from and I've got um, you know the major features there one thing I haven't got is this arc in here this is a this is an, a radius 71 arc now two ways I could do that one is I could get a bit of card or something like that trace a radius on it cut that out and then use that as a template the other one is I can pop this up like that so I've got a, a box at the same level swing an arc from uh, here, swing out from here and then use that as my center to mark that in. Um, I'll probably do that uh, just because yeah I can uh, but that's you know if you're faced with having an arc where the center is off the off the part then yeah sometimes you need to extend that uh, whether that be a bit of wood or a cardboard box in this case uh, and just you know use that to, to, to swing your arc. All that is is just as I said giving me a profile, giving me an outline so that when I cut this out on the bandsaw I'm not going to be cutting away good metal but at the same time I'm not going to be um, leaving uh, excess which means that I, I give myself more work to do when it comes to, to milling that out. From this point is it was 99.5 and from this point was 87.5 so uh, I just used a, a, a compass to put a mark on there uh, and then I can use that with my uh, microscope underneath. This lot here is just to bring that up so it's the same height as the uh, the aluminium uh, and that's just to, to, so I can get a nice uh, clean arc. So uh, we'll strap that down to the table, position that and, and uh, away we go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put this up on a, a slip of aluminium. Uh, I've got some probably about 1.6 maybe 2 2 uh, aluminium and I'll just lift that up and that way I can position my cutter and not chew into the false table it's designed to be sacrificial if needed but let's not uh, you know put big gouges and things in it if we don't have to I'm slowly working my way around uh, I started with that one then put that one in I had to come in with a file and blend that a little bit because I didn't quite get it right but uh, that's all right Oh, next one I've got is this one uh, and that goes up to about there then jumps out comes around then comes back in again I've put um, a texture mark here at 90 degrees to the surface because that's the tangent point that's what I want to come in at so uh, that just helps me with the the angular rotation bit here um, and the only other thing that you've got to remember when doing this is to either take or add on the diameter of your cutter to the to the radius so that you know from zero zero to there is the right distance
So as you can see I've got my, uh, my basic shape. Um, now I just have to take off some material. Uh, on this side there's a probably about a 12 millimeter piece that comes off here and on this on this side uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of relief that goes on around there and then there's a, a, a wad that comes off here. I'm going to leave that to last I think uh, just because uh, I might have trouble holding it if I if I um, do this bit first and then flip it over. Um, so I think I'll, I'll do that. I can find a block to, to, to block that up and then do the rest of it. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, as you can see, I've got this bit. Uh, once again, I've got the shape right. I have to put a, um, a round boss there and then take the rest of this down in, in, in thickness. Uh, on the back, this bit gets taken down and there's a, there's a counter bore and a, and a thing in there. So. This one's a little bit more complicated, um, not enormously so, but just it means that I'm going to have to think a little bit about how I how I do this and how I uh, you know sequence of events. What I discovered was that I'd actually laid this out wrong. Um, this side has got a couple of counter bores and I'd marked everything out from the other side. Now for doing the profile that's fine, but what I realized is that to get these things in an accurate position, I was gonna to have to flip everything over. So fortunately I had enough dimensions on the, uh, on the drawings that I could do that. Um, so I'm just um, finishing off this slot and uh, this one here gets bored for bearing so I think I'm going to be leaving that one. This one here is I'm not sure what that hole does but I think I'll put that hole in and that way I can uh, similar similar way to the way I did this uh, this counter bore but that way I can then flip this over uh, block that up and take off the excess material. I think this is the only one that actually is full height so um, everything else will come out. I'm not doing these to full depth. I'm just going down enough that, that when it machines off on the other side, it'll, it'll break through. As you can see, uh, this one's almost done. I just had to put the, the slot in there and uh, bore out that hole. Uh, but there's one last use for the dividing head that I've got. This is this one. And once again, I still have to bore out 
couple of holes, but that's that's quite all right. I, I can use the uh, boring head for that on the on the table. However, there is a scallop here, and that's actually relief for um, I think it's a pulley in the lathe. So I need to set that up now. I've got dimensions from the centre of that hole and to there and, and so on. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of masking tape on there. Uh, and then from, from that point there back and this point here back, locate that hole. And then use that on the, on the um, rotary table to then be able to swing that arc and just cut that bit of, of stuff away and then that'll be it all i need to do then is bore some holes and uh, that'll be this one finished Here they are, a couple of banjos for a lathe. Uh, this one I've, I've still got to put a hole in here, but uh, that's got a couple of bearings in it, so I'm tossing up whether I should put that on the lathe or not. Uh, but other than that, uh, everything is, is bored and drilled and slotted and oh, it's wonderful. So uh, thanks for watching, see you for the next one.